From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the Coffee Club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims' stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Good morning. I'm going to wait just for a few people to get into chat this morning. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing well. I decided to do a quick live. Well, it's not going to be pretty quick, but I decided to do a live before church today because we have some breaking news information and it's not really on Sebastian Rogers, so if you guys want to stick around for it, you guys can wait. I'm going to be t going through a, a large um, uh, update on Sebastian Rogers. But right now, this is about uh, Madeline Soto. This is the 13-year-old girl from Kissimmee, Florida. She disappeared the same day Sebastian Rogers disappeared. Um, however, two days later, her uh, mom's boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, was arrested for having a lot of these images on his phone, some really bad images that portray, according to the court documents, we can't say for certainty whether or not those are, Mad those are of Madeline Soto. What we can say is in the court documents, they have redacted the name of who those photos are of, but the birth date is that of Madeline Soto. So we naturally believe that the images are Madeline Soto. There's over... 400 of these very um, horrible images of what he did to this young girl in his care. Um, and that's about all I'm going to say about that. But what is the new information? The new information is this right here is Tyler Wallace. This is her biological father. This is somebody that we have not heard from yet in this case. Uh, we heard from Jen. We, you guys know I was one of those people that came out here to you guys and said, I really don't believe Jen knew. Um, you know, I felt like Maddie kept this from her. And, and Stefan was a predator. And I felt like he manipulated Jen because of her mental illness and why I believe that's still true. I've Because of Tyler Wallace coming forward, I do believe Jen has more culpability in something. I don't think she knew this, but what did she know and what did she not prevent protecting her child from that caused this? Like, this is really unexcusable. This is huge. I mean, this, the abuse of this child dates back all the way to 2019 when this girl was only eight years old. It's highly disturbing. The affidavit uh, against Stefan Stearns is absolutely disgusting, heart-wrenching, appalling. I mean, there's just, I, I can't express into words uh, how I felt reading that, um, how completely disgusted I was, but how completely thankful I was this SOB's in the state of Florida um, because he, he's got a rough ride here. So you guys can thank the courtesy of, of the state of Florida and the new law DeSantis put in um, in place on this because he had abused this child uh, back when she was 12 years old. That makes this a capital crime case, in my opinion, here in the state of Florida. Um, so maybe if, if everything works well, he will never, literally never be able to do this to somebody else again. There was a lot of telling signs. So what made me change my mind? What made me kind of get off this fence with um, Jennifer Soto and um, 
my belief that she knew nothing, that she is also a victim in this and she had really no culpability, I'm starting to feel like maybe she did at this point because of Tyler Wallace's interview and one specific part in that interview. So I want to go ahead. Like I said, the Maddie Soto um, conversation is just going to be short and then we're going to get right on into Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers, everybody I'm sure is here for that as well. This is about three minutes, but I don't think we're going to need, um, give me just a second. I don't think we're going to need the full three minutes. I, there's very specific parts here. I know exactly what part I want uh, you guys to see. And it's this one right here. Give me just a second. Let me make sure. Morning. He got in his car and drove from Texas to Florida, only stopping for gas. I need the you to see his face. Got here, Hold Adeline on. Soto's body was found in this rural area of Osceola County. Can I turn it that way? Her mother's boyfriend, Stefan Stern, was charged with sexual battery and possession of child sex abuse material. He is the main suspect in her murder after investigators say Stearns is on video dumping her backpack and laptop in a dumpster in the early morning hours of the day Maddie was reported missing. Did your daughter ever indicate that something was going on in that house? Not to me, no. What did you think? Of there was something time? there. I had interacted with him. on. His there was something there. He said, not to me. So there is some, that answer, I don't know which way it's going to go. Okay. Does that mean she told somebody? Just not him? You know, so that can be that can be implied a few different ways. And I, let me make sure I didn't miss the one that I wanted I wanted to hear because there was one. I don't think. Burns is now in jail on sexual battery. Okay, there we go. Tell me. <laughs> Sorry, there's one spot I want to get here, and that's about his wife or abuse. St Stefan Stearns. Oh, here it is. This is it. Do you think that Jennifer Soto knows more? See that? I don't know. See that head, Bob? I'm, I'm interested in knowing. But see that head, Bob? I don't have reason to believe one way or the other right now. Did you guys see that head, Bob? That's what made me change my mind. Because if you know anything about body language, you can ask yourself a question and you can, you're not even realizing you're doing it, right? You're not even realizing you're doing it. And when you're trying to say no, you know, no, that, that didn't happen that way. Um, you know, uh, no, she's telling, she's, she's, she's telling the truth. <laughs> she's telling the truth. She's telling a hundred percent the truth, right? Um, those are indications that, um, of, of, of slight deception, you know, so obviously I, 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 he doesn't believe what he's saying coming out of his mouth. You see what I'm getting, getting at? That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. He's saying he's saying one thing and his bo his body's answering a different a different way. And so that when a father when I saw him, you know, I kept saying when it comes to Jen right now, we have not a lot of information to get me off the fence at this moment in time. There's not a lot of information to get me off the fence. You need you need to convince me uh, that Jen Soto knew because I've been around the block a time or two. I've talked to many um, ladies of S.A., H T S T. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, that is, um, you know, the S is assault type thing, and the T is the trafficking aspect of it. So, you know, I've talked to I've talked to people, and 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 there's been like this 50 50 split almost where people actually uh, told somebody, and then there's this whole other huge segment that have gone through the same experience that kept it quiet for years, sometimes decades, and never told a soul. So I was in, you know, I was trying to balance that because this was just a, a hectic type of case. You know, you never want to think a mom would ever hurt her child or ever, you know, willingly or knowingly leave her child in a, a bad situation. You know, you I tried to justify it. Maybe she didn't know, you know, maybe... Um, you know, these other things. And it's just, you know, at the end of the day, it was so neglectful. It was so neglectful. And we have to look at that. You know, what did she know? When did she know it? Obviously, there was contention in the relationship. Um, you know, for, according to the grandmother, uh, in and around, like within 24 hours of, of uh, Madeline disappearing, she had indicated in a Telemundo, it was in Spanish, but Plunder, which I think Plunder has a good platform on here, but she's also 
on YouTube uh, had uh, redubbed that interview to put it in, in English. And so the grandmother had said something in there to the effect of, you know, he didn't live here. He wasn't supposed to be here that week. He just happened to come that weekend. So what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Where was he? Where did he live if he didn't live there? Nobody's ever been able to answer that for me. And they're calling this an act of domestic violence, right? Because they're not releasing her autopsy under our new laws here in Florida. So we're having some problems there. So uh, another thing that people are, are curious about is if Jennifer's going to go to jail. Um, I, I think with his bobbing of the head, he knows a little more than the rest of us do. And here's the last thing that kind of is making me feel that this is not going to be good for Jennifer. Now, again, when it comes to ashes of their child, did they split them? I, I don't know whether they did or not. I just know what this man said in this interview. And he said that he is getting, you know, he, he came to get, get the ashes. And um, so I don't know if he has all the ashes. And if he has all the ashes, then is Jen going to jail? Because why would a mother part? with her daughter's ashes. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know how all of that is, um, if they split, you know, what how, how they did that or not. But I just thought that was an interesting uh, point of conversation. So guys, now we're gonna move on. I just wanted to let you guys know that that's out. There is an interview out and it is on uh, Twitter at Matt Block, Block Inc. It's um, B Voice. Um, let me make sure I got the right. Hold on. Let me make sure I gave you the right. Yeah, it's M-A-T-B-L-A-C-I-N-C. -C. Um, and that's on Twitter. And there's a couple parts to that interview. And I believe that the um, uh, interview, the the um, news, the newscast that that did this interview, is putting these things out in little snippets. So I'm hoping that the little snippets um, they'll they'll put out the full um, video. You know, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they'll put out the full unedited video, uh, kind of like they did for. Um, Katie and Chris Proudfoot, that very first interview that they had. I'm hoping that this, uh, with Madeline Soda, they do something like that. But it seemed like it was a very good and emotional interview. You know, it's really sad. In both of these cases that happened February uh, 26, Madeline so Soto and Sebastian Rogers, what really perturbs me is they are very similar. Maybe not the actions inside, the, but I want to tell you how similar these two cases are. They both happened on February 26. They both involve uh, a separated family. The allegations and suspects or persons of interest are on the mom and the stepfather or mom and the boyfriend's side. And then both of these cases have the fathers, the, the biological fathers in both of these cases reeling with grief and agony while they search for their child. Um, when, uh, Ty, um, when Tyler got into town is shortly after that is when they found his daughter. So you can imagine his anger and he was angry. He was angry. He was upset. You could see his pain. And then you look at the moms and, and the moms in both of these cases are just have no emotion. Did you guys see the latest? Um, did you guys see the latest interview with Katie Proudfoot? For those that are just coming in, this right here is Sebastian Rogers. He's a 15-year-old autistic boy out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. He has been missing since February 26. We're kind of covering both the cases that happened on February 26, Madeline Soto and Sebastian Rogers. Madeline Soto was found on March 1st and um, on March 28th, her stepfather or mom's boyfriend, whichever you'd like to call him, uh, was arrested for crimes against this child, but not for her disappearance and not for her death. In this case with Sebastian Rogers, his mother and her husband, um, Christopher Proudfoot, which is the stepfather to Sebastian, are under heavy scrutiny. Many people believe this man right here had something to do with Sebastian Rogers because he thought he Sebastian Rogers was a predator, among other things. Um, so the way the situation went is on February 25th, which was a Sunday, Sebastian Rogers was out with his mother. They went to several different places. She describes him go, you know, going to BJ's, getting a colossal popcorn, bringing these snacks back to the house, putting them away, 
They went out, went bowling, and then went to a steakhouse, a local steakhouse, had dinner, and basically came home. At nine o'clock at night, he went to bed. Uh, his mom went to bed around midnight, and then she wakes up at 6 a.m., and he's nowhere to be found. Her whole life is tipped upside down, and here we are today. So a lot of questions have come in from the, the dogs barking, to the home security system, to why the parents aren't out there, why the mom and stepfather aren't out there helping post flyers, helping search, helping bring awareness, why they're not showing up at their uh, son's vigil, um, why they have run away from home, why they've decided to go three and a half hours away in a completely different state, why massive searches are underway for the son that they say walked out of their home and they don't know why. There's been a lot of social media creators that have gone into the community. We brought a lot of searchers in there. We brought, um, you know, and a lot of us uh, out here do have some crafts and skills, such as Narcid Diver. Narcid Diver is a, a diver uh, that, that, ha that uses sonar and other things that he does, and he has other people in his little clique that do the same or have the same type of passion. And they take that passion and they go out and use it um, to help other people and search for missing and the lost. And so they came in, they were searching stuff, but what we found out is when they came into town, Chris Proudfoot interjected himself into their search. He called them up, he wanted to direct, the, direct them to an area, he wanted to let him know he's the most knowledgeable person to con contact and call if they have any questions. So it was very, you know, these are things that me as a content creator in true crime, I'm looking for when I'm trying to decide um, the behaviors of these people. I'm looking for these red flags. I'm looking for somebody to tip their hand because these people, just, you know, like we, we watch this stuff a lot. We have a good understanding of, of behaviors, of behaviors of guilty people versus innocent people. We have an idea. Uh, we have we have a good indicator of the bullshit card, right? We know we know bullshit better than anybody. We can smell it a mile away, and when and we're very vocal about it, right? We we don't have a problem saying you're full of crap, right? We'll point we'll stop you dead in your tracks if you trying to fill us with this bull crap, and. We will stop you and say, that's bull crap. We'll tell you to your face right then and there. Okay, I love this. I love this stuff. But the bottom line is, is Narca Diver was out there and you saw this interjection. I can tell you, I, you guys watched me. I came on here and I did this video about their finances, right? It's a, um, it's a topic that somebody that's very prideful, um, that has an ego problem, that um, can't bear somebody looking down upon him has a has an image issue like they have to they have to have this 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 facade and if anybody chisels away at that facade they want to correct it because it freaks them out that's Christopher Proudfoot because when I talked about the financial stuff you know I was just bringing you guys with because a lot of people don't see what we do behind the scenes or how we work through questions and process them and you guys are, are now getting to see that I bring this up here I tell you about what we're looking at how it's working and literally by video two we the the, the um, avenue the angle I was looking at the financial angle wasn't holding water but it it irritated Chris Proudfoot so much so that he imitated his neighbor to express all of this information about his finances to say how how prestigious he was and how I got it wrong. Because I'm telling you, no neighbor has that much information about your finances. I am sorry. He was talking about how much their house was worth, what Katie's making, what he's making. I'm thinking, you know... Like, I know my my neighbor has a key to my house. You know, we exchange food. I, I, I cook him dinner every now and then. He cooks me dinner. When I'm on the road, he goes out there, grabs my mail, and sticks it in the house for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, I can't tell you what that man is making in Social Security. I mean, if I really wanted to look into it, Social Security, I could probably look it up, okay? But in all fairness, I really don't know. I don't know if he's got a pension. Do you know if your neighbor's got a pension? I certainly do not know if my neighbor's got a pension. So I don't know how this neighbor has all this information. And then listen to this. So uh, again, we were on, um, on the internet 
this, this crazy thing called the internet, this World Wide Web. And there was a, a content creator on YouTube called The Lab. And he was talking about um, a, a specific topic about uh, Christopher Proudfoot. And there was, and it was about the um, polygraph test. And there just so happened to be, if you guys don't know, I make my own in-house lattes. Isn't, doesn't that look good? Mm. This is mocha salted caramel. I even make my own foam. And no, I don't have a machine. I have no, I have no espresso machine in my house. I just want to let you know that's all done by hand. So, anyways, oh, the uh, DNA. That's right, the, the lab. So the lab uh, was on there, and there was a, some, there was a commenter in there called Sweating Bullets, and boy, this person was going to the mattress, right? Going to the mattress at, at what? And I'm thinking. Somebody did a little something, something like this to me. So I started throwing li little popcorn emojis up in the chat. And I'm like, who thinks sweating bullets is Christopher Proudfoot, right? <laughs> I'm not lying. Because you know he's, he's doing that. This man has an image issue. He can't stand that people are looking at him like a monster. He himself, if he's so concerned about being a monster, it's because he has that own insecurity. Why would a man have that insecurity about himself that he thinks the world's looking at him like a monster? Maybe because he knows he's a freaking monster. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Chris, I'm just going to say today's Sunday. Today's a great day to get right with the Lord. That's all I'm going to say. Today is a great day to get right with the Lord. And you know what, Katie? Today's a great day for you to get right with God too. Today's a great day. Come on over. We're having church. We're having church at 9.05. Come on over. Get right. Get right. You need, you need help. There's nobody that can help you like the place I'm going today. Why don't you come join us? Why don't you come join us? My preacher's good. Oh, he's, he's good. He'll speak right to your heart. He'll speak right to your heart. I don't know a Sunday that I don't have a tear or two coming down my face. He speaks to me. He speaks to me. We need Jesus. He needs Jesus. They need Jesus, right? So <clears throat> I just saw, thought that was funny, but you know what I thought was even more ironic is that after I started calling that uh, sweating bullets out, all of a sudden we never heard from him again. <laughs> I mean, literally, boom, no more sweating bullets. All up in there, defend, defend, defend. Sweating bullets? Are you, are you Christopher Proudfoot? Hey, Chris, are you in here? And then you hear crickets. True story. True story. So I think I think Christopher's out there, and I thought it was awfully ironic. Christopher's out there in the mix of social media, watching all us talking heads, breaking down his case, explaining why we believe him and his wife are lying through their teeth, their awful, awful behavior. Their insensitive behavior, their lack of moral compass. I mean, I could literally go on for days, okay? I could literally go on for days. They've lied from the minute they opened their mouth. Christopher has been pushing that he's been cleared and he has nothing to do with this long before it ever happened. By day eight, he was cleared and passed a polygraph test. Then we find out by day 12 or 16, he's on Nancy Grace saying he ain't cleared nor passed a polygraph test. But hey, he'll take one. And now it's, uh, well, you know, I can't take it. TBI doesn't want me to take it. I don't think we're getting it. Uh, I don't think we're getting it. I don't think we're getting it for very, very specific reasons. Because he cannot pass it. He cannot pass it. Um, the belt issue, he lied about the belt issue. He lied about CPS. He's saying he's basically on a first name basis uh, on CPS. There's a lack of evidence in here. There's a, a, a complete lack of evidence from a, a boy that doesn't understand evidence nor how to clean up after himself. You know, that's been contention in his house. The fact that he can't clean up after himself, he has to clean his room or all the stuff goes into a garbage bag and thrown away. How, 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 how detrimental is that to a, guy, a kid that has the kind of disability he has? Uh, but hey, that's the Proudfoot's... Uh, way you know mental abuse sometimes is more is more damaging than the physical abuse I ha i've had both 
I've, I, in my lifetime, I've dealt with both physical and mental. And I tell you what, I take the physical over the mental any day of the week. I'll tell you that right now. Um, documented injuries. Um, you know, we, we, he has court records that documented injuries. And I really truly believe that they were able to cover up some of the abuse that was going on by basically saying he did it to himself. Uh, people are re raising the issue of whether or not uh, the mom made him put a diaper on that night. And did she check on him afterwards? Or did she just throw him in there? And where are the clothes? Have the clothes been gathered that he was at that roadhouse? Where are they gathered? We don't know. Um, what we do know is that every twist and turn, it seems like Christopher Proudfoot is interjecting himself somewhere, somehow into this case. Um, and people are like, well, he's the stepfather. You're right. He is the stepfather that has chose to remove himself from this case. So if you're removing yourself from this case and running three and a half hours away and making sure that this boy that you say walked out your front door is going to come back to an empty house, I don't quite understand that, quite frankly. But, you know, again, I'm unsure, right? So Katie Proudfoot is in this interview and she's just this. Well, we need our son to come home. Anybody with any information? Da, da, da. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm so sick of all of these professionals telling me that people express their emotions differently. And they are right. Some people have, you know, some defects, right? There are some defects out there that, that prevent people from feeling. There are some defects out there that prevent people from, from even being able to shed a tear. There are a lot of things out there that alter uh, people's behaviors and stuff like that. But those, again, aren't the norm, okay? They're not the norm. Normally, statistically, certain people act this particular way in a situation like this, okay? And non-guilty people in a situation like this typically, statistically, act this way, okay? And then you have people that are guilty, statistically, when you're guilty, act a very specific way, this way, okay? So a mother that is normal, like us, right? Normal people, not the one of the out of the norms people, normal people, which is what they're saying they are. Let's be clear. So normal people, when you have a freaking kid missing for six damn weeks, are usually hysterical, kind of like I am right now. Just saying. Just saying. And mom's over there not even shedding a blessed tear. Please call law enforcement right away if you see our son. Dude. You ain't helping your situation. <laughs> Lord, help me. It's Sunday and I'm going to church. I'm going to need church. I'm going to need church. Oh, Lord, I'm going to need church today. I swear to God, I'm going to need church today. Whoo. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Trying to keep all of the, the way I feel, you know. And last week at our, at our church, the, the, the pastor was talking about anger. I mean, it was great, great service, you know. He was talking about anger and what triggers anger and how to take that anger and, and put it in positivity because, you know, I every now and again, you know, I could I could be one of those people with the pitchfork <laughs> right on the street. Let's get them, you know. And, and and that's why I go to church because, you know, sometimes I just need somebody just to call, just, 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 right, right, just. So I'm trying to find positive ways. That's why I thought the sign waving would be great out in front of their uh, Yogi Bear campground. But I'm definitely going to do something out there. We're, they're going to see me for a day, at least 24 hours. I don't have time to spend on them. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to spend my time on them. I want them to know I'm there. But I've got, I've got better places to be with my time. And that's looking for their son while they sit on their ass and do shit. Excuse my language. Bad day. <laughs> Bad day. Um... So we're going to be out there just for everybody to know the 21st. Everybody was a little confused. They're like, are you out here? We see this event, you know, and there was a cop out there in the Yogi Bear campground and it kind of got everybody a little riled up a little bit. 
And I think that they were there just, you know, I, 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 when they circle around a little bit, sometimes I get nervous and I'm out there and I see a couple cops circling around because usually that means something's about to happen. Not to me, you know, to whatever's going on. I've been out there enough times. So when I was hearing this, I was thinking, ooh, maybe they're, they're ready to make an arrest or something, you know, like that. So I'm like, send me a video. Send me a picture. Let me see how this officer's acting. I know the, I know the, the routine. I saw him and I'm like, wow, nah, that doesn't look like that. And so I started thinking about it and I said, oh, you know what, they had that event uh, Saturday in front of Yogi Bear Campground. And I bet you they just probably stationed an officer there as a, uh, just, you know, a, 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 per, a, a precaution. You know, you never know with these things if they're gonna get heated and stuff like that. Um, never, if you're ever out there um, protesting or anything like that, never allow your emotions to overcome you. If, if you're that highly emotional, you probably should not be at a protest. I'm just going to let you know, because even when we raise our voice and, and stuff like it comes from a place of love, you know, it doesn't come from a place of hostility or anger. It comes from a place of, of love and action and us wanting to affect a change of some sort. Like, for example, Leilani Simon, it was to to get her ass arrested. Right. Let's be honest. That's why we were out there. And when we realized our protest wasn't really working for her to to. Um, you know, break down and confess to law enforcement, we decided to start, you know, attacking law enforcement. We started going after them, like, fire the mayor. <laughs> you want to get the attention of, of of people? You start going after the politician. When they start realizing they got some crazy people on the side of the road saying, fire your mayor. <laughs> fire your county commissioners. This ain't the way it's done. When you start pushing on that, they're like, oh, crap, it's an election season. Shut this lady up. <laughs> Shut this lady up. So, you know, next thing you know, next thing you know, we're, we're hecklers and, and we're starting to get uh, no loitering signs in a, in a place that they, they're not required to be. I mean, they can't put them. Like, they did. They, if I wanted to legally challenge, that's what they knew. They knew if I wanted to legally challenge them, they would be up, you know, up a creek without a paddle. Um, but, you know, it, 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 we did, we, we accomplished what we needed to accomplish. And, um, you know, and, and the crap a chief of police, he's, he basically lost his job. He stepped down. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we don't, I'm not too worried about it. We, we try, we do come from a place of love. It's a little rough, but that's how it kind of goes sometimes. Um, we, we do this because we love it. All right. So what else do we have on Sebastian Rogers? I really don't think we have a whole lot. Oh, <clears throat> somebody was talking about Katie Proudfoot's, um, impressive resume. I forgot about this. I'm looking, sorry, I'm looking through my notes because I, 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 I've been researching this stuff for, for weeks. And um, some things just, you know, I write it down, but they may not hold water. And then we kind of look, you know, we wait until something comes out and we go back to it. Um, this one is, it, it, it sounds like she was a combat and uh, she was combat trained and martial arts trained um, from what I'm hearing. I could be absolutely wrong because I did not see this impressive resume myself. Um, but I just thought that was interesting. How can a mother, how can a mother go on a, and oh, that's what I was looking for, on an interview and be a, a freaking stick when her child has been missing for so long? We all saw a grieving mother in, um, Riley Strain's, um, sorry, in Riley Strain's case. Let me find that, um, I just saw it this morning. Give me just a second. But basically, she's a stick. No emotion. No nothing. Here we go. We're keeping our face and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities of they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. Look at her we behavior. We have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. And we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. You know, the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning, autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Are you so hungry? He's typically a very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. 
Huh. So, he gets a little violent. That's not what they said in many interviews in the past. On Smiley's World, I had her specifically ask, ask them. Specifically ask them. Specifically ask them. What happens when Sebastian gets, you know, basically overstimulated? How does he react? Does he have violent outbursts? And what triggers those outbursts? They said he just, when he gets frustrated or overstimulated, he holds his feet, hands in the fist position and puts him down by his side and stomps his feet. And that's the, ba- I mean, specifically ask them that question. And that's what they said. And now all of a sudden he's a violent kid. A violent kid if, if he's overstimulated. Okay. All right, Cupcake. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when, he's, when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian's out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, Jeez, where's the tears? Okay, I need to stop. It's Sunday. I need to stop. I'm going to have to get that out. Lord help me. Lord help me. I can't. I just can't today. I can't today. Katie, Chris, come join me at church. I'll be over at Countryside Christian Church, 905. Come on over. I need Jesus. I'm going to have to pray for myself because you get me so frustrated that you see that. It just it just falls out of my mouth. I have this pop mouth and I just got to shovel this crap back in it. Uh, well, there you guys have it. What do you What did you think, honestly? I want to hear what you guys thought of her being a stick. Bubba, if you, if you pick up, go pick up a phone. What? Lady, you, you, what do you know where you can't even fake emotion? How bad was it? You ain't doing it right. If you're going to fake it, fake it better. No emotion. Weeks she hasn't seen her son. Law enforcement's telling her the statistics of them not finding their son at this moment in time. Trust me, they are. They're telling her how grim these possibilities are. She's seeing where they're searching, such as landfills and waterways. And she just wants to be all nice and calm. No big deal. No big deal. We just need to bring him home. He's not in trouble. He just needs to come home. At what point, Katie, are you going to start freaking out? At what point are you going to realize that this is a serious situation? At what point are you going to acknowledge that he didn't walk out of the house? I don't know. I digress. We're still on the search for Sebastian Rogers, the 15-year-old autistic kid out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. Uh, today is church. I know that I've, I've talked about that. We do go to church. Um, our, my, my club over on the uh, YouTube channel, we go over to uh, Countryside Christian Church on YouTube. So if you guys would like to come over, I've got the link on my Twitter. I've got the link on my Facebook group. And I got the link on my um uh, Facebook page. So if you guys would like to come over and join and hang out with us, it starts at 9.05 and I can't wait to see you there. God bless everybody, I hope. I know this morning's a little uh, sketchy because we had Madeline Soto. We have all this information on the Proudfoots. I don't know which way this is going. I feel like something's got to give at some point, you know, and I don't know if they're doing forensics in the, the house. It doesn't appear that they've done forensics anywhere. Um, I've been praying that they will, but law enforcement is not giving us any press press conferences. They're 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 blocking everybody out. Yet they can't make seem to make arrests, and they have no evidence or information. But clearly, uh, TBI and Sumner County needs no more leads. They don't need the help of the public because usually um, law enforcement that needs the help of the public usually has these things called press conferences. Press conferences. So you're telling us that this boy walked out of this house, but you can't show us he walked out of this house. You're telling us there's no foul play to shut up, sit down, take a back seat, let you do the job, yet nobody's arrested and this boy isn't brought home in weeks. And you cannot tell us where he is. But hey, sit down, shut up, 
Not foul play over here. Nothing to see over here. Okay. Well, we'll see. I'm going there the 21st. I'm going there the 21st. I'm going to see if I can get a hold of that Nick Barris guy and just chat with him a little bit. And, um, you know, I'd like to, to see what's what there, you know, because I, I and thank him for his service, because I got to say, I, I, he's his his uh, his reporting is refreshing. I got to be honest with you. His reporting is refreshing. So I appreciate that. All right, guys, make it a great day. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. Happy Sunday. We'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm sure I'll come back live later today anyways. We got a lot to go over and a lot to unpack. Take care.